Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood, having trained more than 24,000 vets, helping you and your fur babies thrive. Live in studio, it's Pet Talk Today with Will Bangura, answering your pet behavior and training questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host and favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Good Saturday morning, pet lovers. I'm Will Bangora. Hey, thanks for joining us. You're listening to Pet Talk Today here on the Pet Talk Today Facebook page, where each and every Saturday morning we do our Pet Talk Today show and our Facebook Live. Do me a favor, hit the like button, show us some love. Also, if you would, in the comments section, please let us know where you're watching from and what kind of a pet that you have. And then also please, in addition to liking our page and liking this video, please share the video to your Facebook page, to your friends, your family members. Uh, Not everybody can afford private in-home dog training, and that's why we do this. This is a labor of love to be able to give back to the community. Um, If this is the first time or if you're brand new to Pet Talk today, let me just take a second to talk a little bit about what we do. Um, Many Saturdays, we are talking about specific topics that relate to dog training, uh, dog behavior, cat training, cat behavior. We tend to lean a little heavier towards the dogs. But we oftentimes then take your calls, we take your questions, and we try to help you to try to improve uh, the behavior of your pet so that their life can improve and you get to enjoy your pet uh, more as well. Um, Those of you that have been uh, regular viewers and listeners to Pet Talk today, we appreciate you. You might uh, notice that I'm here by myself today. So Jordan is off this morning, and uh, hopefully we'll see him uh, next Saturday as well. Today, I'm going to be talking about um, a very special topic, and it's one that does not get talked about much. I don't know if any of you take your pets to a groomer. Anyone? Well, currently, no state requires the licensing of pet groomers, contrary to what a lot of people believe, that uh, a license doesn't exist anywhere, any state in the United States. Um, Anybody can call themselves a groomer. They don't need to be certified. They, They don't need to be licensed. And the question becomes, is, is your pet safe? You know, we assume when we take them to the groomer that we have a real professional that has some real skills and knows how to handle pets, even pets that might be difficult. Because let's face it, that's just part of the job. For a lot of pets that go in there, it's not a pleasant experience for them. But is it a safe experience for your pet? And then a little bit later, we're going to be talking about dog trainers. And it's the same thing. Dog trainers, I don't know if you know this, but the dog training industry is not regulated either. There is no requirement for education. There's no requirement for training. There's no requirement for certification. There's no requirement for licensing. Literally, my next door neighbor, who's a nurse, could go ahead and put up a website today and say, hey, I'm a dog trainer and go out there and start training dogs. Same thing with a groomer. So we're going to be discussing that today. Um, I've got a guest today that uh, we have on the phone with us, and that's Rosemary Marchetto. She's a lifelong New Jersey resident, and she's also an animal advocate. Her mission is is to make New Jersey the first state to adopt unprecedented legislation in the United States that would require dog groomers to become state licensed in order to provide some oversight in the dog grooming industry. Um, Rosemary contacted me. She had been listening to Pet Talk today, and she wanted to know if she could come on and talk about her experience and talk about Bijou's Law. 
So I'd like to welcome to Pet Talk today. Welcome to the show. Rosemary, thank you for being here this morning. How are you? I'm well, Will. Thank you for having me. So you contacted me and you were talking to me uh, about uh, the grooming industry. And you were talking to me about um, your dog, Bijou and Bijou's Law. I don't want to take any more time for me to talk Tell us your story, Rosemary. Share with our viewers what this is all about. How did you come to, you know, have this uh, mission of yours? So take it away. Thank you. Yes. Um, So I had a six-year-old sheep suit named Bijou, who I took to the groomers. And I regularly took him to the groomers. And I purposely sought out a large chain grooming salon as I thought that would be the safest, most protected place. As they were had a very reputable um, reputation. Mm-hmm. And I made an appointment and brought him in for a regular what I thought was going to be a routine dog grooming. Well, when I took him in, the groomer came out and greeted me. And uh, after we went through some uh, questions about what kind of cut he was going to get and so on and so forth, the groomer said to me, I hope this dog doesn't give me a hard time. I had a bad day. So I paused for a second. I had a sense of foreboding, obviously. But did I think he was going to kill my dog? No, I thought that would be quite the stretch. However, within 45 minutes, I received a call from the store manager that my dog had died. I went to the grooming salon to find out what had happened. And without getting into too much detail, I wasn't given any information about what had happened. They just had me come and pick up my dog. I called the police. The police made a a report. And from there, I started to find out exactly what goes on. And before I get any further, let me just say to all the dog groomers out there, this is not a personal affront against dog groomers. I've had plenty of great dog groomers. Exactly. In the past, yeah. I mean, Fiji was sick, so it, it did. You know, let, let anybody think this is uh, something just about dog groomers. It's not about dog groomers. It's about the dog grooming industry and the lack of oversight. As in every industry, there's good and bad in all. However, in dog grooming, where you're dealing with live animals and you're taking uh, tools to animals, there's absolutely no oversight in the industry. So it's called a caveat emptor or buyer beware. So when you bring your dog in, the person who's grooming your dog might have started yesterday with absolutely no training whatsoever, or your your dog groomer might have had um, amazing um, education through the uh, AKC or through the uh, the dog grooming schools that are out there. It, they run the gamut, so you don't know who you're getting. Um, so that, that, that was a big eye-opener for me to find out there was absolutely no oversight. There was no, there was no number I could call. There was no recourse I could take. It's just, I'm sorry, the dog is dead. And from what I've come to learn over these past 10 years, this is an ever-increasing problem. As you are aware, there are grooming salons opening up now uh, on every corner in every town. Uh, and it, and again, there's no oversight. There's nobody you can call if this happens to you. There's nothing you can do. Um, you can sue if that's what you choose to do, but that doesn't make it any better for the next person coming up behind you. They're going to walk into the same situation. So I contacted my local assembly woman at the time. It was Valerie Veneri Huddle here in New Jersey in Broken County. And, um, I asked if I could meet with her and she obliged and I had, I raised the question. And she, too, didn't believe me. She said, oh, come on. Dog groomers are licensed. I said, they're not licensed. I did my due diligence. I am a paralegal. I've looked into the law. They are not licensed. Not in New Jersey. Not in any state in the country. So there's there's a a two-pronged problem here. The first one is dispelling the idea or the notion that people think that dog groomers are licensed, as did I. I mean, it seems silly that they wouldn't be when your locksmith has to be licensed and your dog actually has to have a license, but your dog groomer does not. 
And that's a fact. This is, this is not, this is, I've done research over the years. So this is not just, I'm talking off the top of my head. I'm telling you, I know. And uh, a simple search on Google, dog grooming incidences. And now you see them all come up because we have social media. Mm-hmm. Well, back when I started, it wasn't as prevalent as it is now. So it's up to the dog owner if they want to put their story out there, report it to the media or not. There is no, there's absolutely nothing overseeing this caveat emptor industry when you bring your dog in. So Bijou's bill is the first of its kind. I And let me just say the first of its kind, I've made it through the assembly and it's now in the New Jersey Senate. When I say the first of its kind, that doesn't mean any other states have tried. Many, many, many states have tried over the years. This is not a novel idea. Many states have tried. Um, and it's just not getting through. Uh, so it is been, has been my mission, it continues to be my mission, to get Bijou's bill passed to make New Jersey the first state to require oversight in grooming. And this way, it can be passed more easily and more readily in other states once one state has done that. So, like I said earlier, it's, it passed in the, assembler, in the Assembly overwhelmingly. It's now in the Senate. Uh, Governor Murphy, uh, if you would like to go to my website at Bijou'sLaw.com, on the homepage, Governor Murphy speaks about his favor towards the bill. So it is, it is going. It is going. We're not there yet, but it is going. But letting people know that dog groomers are not licensed and there's no oversight whatsoever in this industry is huge. I can't begin to tell you how many people have contacted me over the years, both groomers and non-groomers alike. Groomers are actually in favor of my bill as well because they too have sought oversight in their own industry and have not gotten it. So it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. When you take your dog in, you just have to hope that you get your dog back. I mean, there's horrific things that go on out there because of the lack of oversight in this industry. So that's kind of what my bill is about and who I am and what I'm trying to do. Well, God bless you for, for doing that. Um, question for you. Um, Please. because you said the bill is now in the New Jersey Senate. Um, Correct. Do you have an idea of how the Senate might vote? Does it, do you anticipate this is going to be close? Do you anticipate that it'll pass? I, I can't anticipate that because I have no idea what's going on behind closed doors that I'm unaware of. So until a vote comes down, I don't know what goes on until that, that bill goes up for a vote. Mm-hmm. Do they have it scheduled for a vote yet? It's, it's scheduled for the fall, for the fall season. For session. the fall, okay. Uh, yeah. Make sure you get in touch with me after that vote. Okay. I want to know, okay. you know what happens there because um, if it passes, that's going to be a precedent. And yeah. if that passes, yeah. that means, it, like you said, it's a whole lot easier to get that passed um, in other states. Um, right, right. You had mentioned that the dog grooming industry um, and a lot of dog groomers um, are for this. Um, Correct. The New Jersey Professional Pet Groomers Alliance, you said, the American Kennel Club, uh, United Paws Group of California. Um, Have you talked to any groomers that are for this? And and what what do they say? They've been seeking oversight before I even had my dog because they see firsthand what goes on at these dog grooming salons. And have no recourse because there's nothing to recourse about. Maybe they get fired, then they move on to another job. But the dog groomers who have contacted me, um, and by the way, the AKC has contacted me, and they actually wrote the safety protocol for the bill. So it's not like this is just being done as a knee-jerk reaction to the death of my dog. I I fought long and hard to get this bill written and written well and uh, made it... uh, easily to read for, for anybody who wants to read the bill. It's on the, again, the homepage at the bottom of the homepage. Um, and the groomers have contacted me because they, like I said earlier, they've been trying to do this so that they can get autonomy in their industry. But look, a license is a win for everybody. It's a win for the door groomer. 
because they get to, to, to regulate their own industry. It's a win for the dog owner because you know who you're leaving your dog with, somebody who's accredited. And it's a bigger win for the dog because they get somebody who these things may cut down on happening to them. Listen, I'm not to say that accidents don't happen, accidents don't happen. But right now, at the rate that accidents are happening, it, it's like a wild west. Yeah. And maybe you hear about it, and maybe you don't. What are some of it the, all depends on the dog owner. What are some of the stories that you've heard? Because you said you know a lot sure. of groomers have contacted you, and and they've seen some of the things that happen behind the scenes. Um, and and not to you know, I'm not doing this to be sensational. Um, we're doing this just to educate people. These things happen. Right. Um, it doesn't even really need to be sensationalized because it's out there. Uh, uh, there's one I'm reading right here now. A dog's hind leg paralyzed after visit to the groomer. Another one. A family calls for justice after dog dies during a visit to the groomer. Here's another one where a dog's tail got cut off at the groomer. Uh, broke, I'm sorry. Broke his tail. Um, there was another one, another woman contacted me, which is a big one. When they put the dogs in the heated drying cages, I had a, a, a fellow New Jerseyan call me from Mawa who had a Newfoundland dog and they put in the drying cages, these heated drying cages, mm -hmm. which also aren't regulated. And when you leave your, and I get many of these calls, many, many of these calls, whereby the groomer leaves the dog in the heated drying cage, maybe leaves the dog in there too long, and the dog expires and actually becomes cooked from the heat. Wow. So it's, it's, it's a constant problem. It's a constant problem. And I'm trying to get the word out there that, Hey, look, there's some good groomers out there, but, the, but the, again, the industry is not, there's nobody overseeing this industry whatsoever. So as a paralegal, I had to get certified to become a paralegal to work for a law firm. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, that's not what's happening here. That is not what's happening here. I've seen many places put a sign outside, no experience, no problem. Oh, yeah. Become a dog groomer. Start today. Yeah. So, you know, that kind of gives you an idea of, of where the industry is at. And it's not in a good place. It's crazy. And it's sad for all the really good groomers. Yeah. There's really good groomers that who have left the industry, they told me, because they can't handle what they see in these grooming places. Wow. So there's all good dog groomers that we're losing who don't want to be a part of this, this industry that is unregulated and see the horrors of things. Horrors. You just may not be hearing about it. Yeah. Question for you. Um, if who and, and what, if there is out there are giving the pushback? Oh, well, some of them are groomers who don't want to get licensed. Some are um, lobbyists who work for the uh, some sections of the dog grooming industry who don't want licensing because then that means either prices go up or more has to be done. You know, it's, it's more oversight, it's more work for them, and they don't want to do more work. Yeah, and it's not even about the money because the money a license will be seventy five dollars for three years. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. It's about the oversight. It's making sure that when you go into a groomer, you have somebody who's gone through school or some sort of training. That's not happening here. That's not happening here. And I think so a lot of people. I think a lot of people don't realize that that there are a lot of groomers out there oh. that never went to grooming school. Correct. Or had a day of training. They just walked on the job. Like I said, just recently in a town nearby, I saw a sign outside. No experience, no problem. Be a dog, be a dog groomer today. These are the people who you're leaving your dog with. And listen, we're all, you know, we're alive. We're living beings. The person may be going through something one day. All the dogs have different temperaments. They're scared. When the dog comes into a dog groomer, you know, they're scared. They don't know what's going on. And I've heard, you know, a dog groomer to date the dog to groom it. I mean, this is outrageous. It's outrageous. If so, your dog gives you any kind of pushback, you shouldn't be taking your dog into the dog groomer. Exactly. Now, you said something that surprised me. You said that some of the dogs even are sedated. Correct. That is correct. And, and did you hear that from other groomers, or how did you find that out? 
Dog owners. Ah, wow. Dog owners who contacted me. Imagine that, folks. Imagine, imagine taking your dog to the groomer, and the groomer gives it drugs to sedate it right. without your permission. And for some, do they? First of all, it should never happen. Number one. Number two, right. is it a medication that the dog might be allergic to? Uh, is the dog going to have an adverse reaction to it? Um, you know, for for pets we do dosage based on weight did they know what dose to give wow i'm just blown away yeah blown away and a lot of people a lot of people just i didn't know i didn't know sure. but now that i do know i need to let everybody else know because although my story is sad there's other stories that are continuing that i that need to be told and hopefully if we have some oversight in this industry which it's not a big deal to get a license to have this grooming industry license, just like your hairdresser, your nail salon, <laughs> you know, your it's, plumber, it's your it's electrician, doing the right thing, your plumber, right? It's, it's the same thing, and these are live animals. Yeah, your massage these therapist. These are your pets. It's a family member, or but yet you drop your dog off and you turn your back, you walk away, you don't know what happened. And for for every one of my stories. There's 10 more stories that you've just not heard about. Yeah. Now, there are those people that are out there. And I, and I saw it in the comments uh, as we yes. were promoting, yes. promoting the show yes. that, you know, they come from the position uh, government uh, needs to get out of the way. Um, the last yeah. thing we need is the government to get involved, um, telling us what to do. Um, what do you say to that? The people who, who speak out, they, they, they clearly don't understand what is going on, and that's part of the problem. Because they don't hear about the problem, they don't understand why there's a need for the problem. So they just see it as uh, a money grab, uh, government coming in. They just don't understand the totality of what I've, come to learn over the past 10 years everybody who who hears these stories who has a dog who's aware that they're not licensed and the groomers who have seen it firsthand are all in favor of of legislation those who who are who are not in favor of the legislation clearly just don't understand the what what goes on in in a dog grooming salon when you're not around so and they just think it's, oh, it's government again. It's not government again. It's not government again. It's oversight. It's just like driving a car. Do you, you say, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, 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 car accidents happen, right? They happen. You're on, a, you're on a road, car accidents happen. Would you rather drive on a street where, in a, in a state where a license needs to be sought after before you get into a car? Or is it like, hey, accidents are going to happen. Let's not get driver's license. Same thing. You know, when we take a look at um, other industries, uh, we mentioned some of them, nail techs, uh, plumbers, your heating and air right. conditioning person, uh, right. massage therapist, um, I don't know if I already said electricians. The list goes on. The list yeah. goes on and on and on. Right. Um, right. Now, for those people that are, you know, the anti-government people, um, Stop using government services, you know, stop utilizing the police, the right. fire, the roads and all right. those things. You know, your right. police officers are licensed. They're certified fire department. Your firefighters right. are as well. Um, government's not always bad. I mean, think about right. uh, the Food and Drug Administration. How many people's lives have been saved right. as a result of, of that? Um, oh. Department of Agriculture, you know, being able to step in when Correct. we've got recalls on food that, you know, has salmonella or E. coli or something like that. Right. Um, right. And like you said, you know, the state definitely is not getting rich off of $75 a groomer. Oh. It costs yeah. more money to you know, oversee that than $75 a groomer. Correct. Uh, Correct. But they need, but the, the professionals need to have a little skin in the game. Now, yeah, and, and the, and the good groomers want it. The good groomers have been asking for it. And we're it. losing good groomers because there's not oversight. 
Yeah. It's the same thing in the dog training industry. And I'm going to get into that later. Um, but tell me a little bit about how this would work. Okay. Because, um, you know, how does, how would somebody go about getting certified? How would they go about getting licensed? Would there be with that certification process, who's going to be the, who's going to certify? Are there multiple certifications that could come into play? Um, you know, what's going to be, are there specific educational requirements that the groomers would have to have? Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Surely. So in New Jersey, the Professional Pet Groomers Alliance um, and the AKC have partnered together and wrote a safety protocol. We would be asking for a groomer or a potential licensed groomer to get schooled, either through the New Jersey Professional Pet Groomers Alliance school accredited school, which is usually about six months, get certified. There's other schools you can get certified through doesn't have to be a specific one to New Jersey. Uh, once they are certified, school, they would come in, they would apprentice for a year or two. Upon apprenticing, whether being over, overseen by a, a, a groomer who who's obviously had more years experience, they would apply for a license. So what does that mean? They apply for a license from the state, and they would take a written and practical exam. So the written exam would be a, a series of questions, again, partnered with the AKC and the New Jersey Professional Tech Groomers Alliance have this testing. And practical, we would get dogs from a shelter and you would do a practical with a seasoned groomer or a master groomer who would oversee the grooming uh, techniques of, of a potential licensed groomer. Upon the passing, they would be given a license for $75. It would be good for three years. And then in three years, they can renew their license if they're still in the industry, take any uh, CEUs or any uh, accreditation that they need to keep up in their industry. And it, it would be just, and it would roll out just like that. Are, what happens, is there a provision or what happens to uh, groomers that are not certified, not licensed, but they're already working as a groomer? Oh, we would ask them to take the same test. We would ask you to take the same test. Um, show us that you could pass this test. If, if, they, if they're seasoned, they should have no problem with taking a written and practical test. It should be, it should be a no-brainer for them. What happens if they don't pass? If they don't pass, they can try again. Okay. I, I guess my thing is I, I am 100% for Bijou's Law, and I'd like to see that all over the country. Um, I do have a little concern and, and I'm wondering, you know, for those people that are already working in the street, because like you said, there's a lot of good, a lot of good groomers. And, and, and I think there's the good a lot groomers, of good. Yeah. yeah. And I think the good groomers would, you know, take the test and do that. But yeah, um, exactly. Is there I'm, I'm guessing, but I don't know. I don't want to assume. <clears throat> is there like a grandfather uh-huh. clause to kind of help them transition over time? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you've been working in the industry, uh, the state is going to work with you. We're not, this is, this is not an obstacle to, to get good groomers out of the grooming industry, quite the opposite. We want good groomers to stay in the dog grooming industry and this license licensure would hopefully weed out the people who aren't in it for the right reason. Right. And that may be, uh, yeah, 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 right. Or they, or they just, they don't have the skill level that they need. Well, they don't have the skill level, but, but you know, yeah. um, I don't want. But, I don't want somebody working on, you know, the jet that I'm going to be flying to New York on from Phoenix Correct. that, you know, doesn't have good training. Correct. And we want the same. We want the same. We all want the same thing, but it's just not happening. It's not happening for all the wrong reasons. Why do you think, you know, I want to ask you a question just as somebody who's been, you know, doing this with, with, uh, the grooming industry, you know, I'm, I've got the same frustration with the dog training industry. There's no oversight, no certification requirement, no licensure mm-hmm. requirement, nothing. Um, anybody can say that they're a dog trainer and boom, they go out there and, and they're doing their thing. Regardless, they could know nothing, perhaps. Why do you think it is? Right. Why do you, I mean, because there are other professions that, you know, licensure, certification. What is it about the 
dog world. And do you have a do you have a, a thought about yeah. that? I do. Dog grooming is big, big, big business and getting bigger. So those institutions, groups, lobbyists, so on and so forth, are are paid to make sure these kinds of bills don't pass, so that there is less oversight and less that has to be done. It's making it easier for corporate America to just, you know, if they lose 10,000, 20,000 dogs a year, it's no big deal considering their income, what they're generating. It's, it's off balance. It's not being passed for all the wrong reasons. So, and it's big business, a lot who generates what goes on in the political forum. So when it comes to that political forum, um, mm-hmm. cause you're, you're involved in this. Are we yes, seeing that kind of problem from the uh, big box pet stores that have grooming services? Uh, I can't say for sure, but I would imagine. Where's, yes. Yes. Because obviously they're very yes. profitable. You know, the big chains. Correct. They're, they're Correct. making a lot of money, a ton of money. Right. They're making a lot of money. A lot of money. But they would make a lot more money if they kept the dogs alive. Yeah, wonder how much they're paying out yeah. in uh, in legal fees and in suits for right. for damages. And, well. and I would love to partner with the big box industries and the dog grooming industry in general to just make it safer. That's all. I have no listen. I have I have no skin in, the, in this race here. I got no. I, pardon the pun. I have no dog in this race. I, my dog's gone. It is it is my job now to educate and ensure the safety of other dogs coming up behind. And it seems like it's a no-brainer. People say to me, oh, this is a no-brainer. This is a great bill. Of course it will pass. It's not passing. It's not passing. Have so you... I ask who's ever listening out there in big business and so on and so forth to partner with me. Let's make it a safe industry. Let's do the right thing. Now, have you... you know, we're... we're, we're no, go ahead. We're looking now for Beach's Bill team, Beach's Law and Beach's Bill team is looking now for sponsorship from companies all around the United States who are in favor of this legislation and who want to back this legislation and uh, sponsor us. We're also looking for uh, celebrity clientele who is in favor of, of Beach's Law and backing this bill. So I'm putting it out there on your show for the first time. Look, People want to get involved. I am ready to get involved and do the right thing with the people who want to step forward and do the right thing for the future of our pet. You know, our pet talk today show on, on Facebook is, is, you know, heard all over the place throughout the United States. The podcast is heard in over 78 countries. So I'm going to make, mm. I'm going to make this uh, plea. If you have the same concerns um, get involved. If you know somebody that is somebody that you know personally, a celebrity that has a dog, a politician that has a dog, somebody of influence that mm. might want to get involved so that this message can get out better, um, get in touch with Rosemary. Rosemary, how can people get in touch with you? Yes, you can reach me. My email address is Bijou's Law. B I J O U S L A W at gmail.com. I'm just going to repeat that again. It's B I J O U S L A W dot com. At gmail.com. Oh, at gmail. That's my, that's my, that's how they can get in touch with me on my email. All right. Let me just do that again since I screwed that up. So if you want to email (laughs) Rosemary, her email address is Bijou's Law at gmail.com. That's B as in boy, J O U S Law at gmail.com. Right. B I J O U S. Right. Bijou's Law.com. The website, you can go to the website. The homepage has um, the bill. You can read the bill. It's, it's, it's written very simply, it's not in, all in legalese, it's, it's easy to read. You can read the bill, you can sign the petition, and 
if you want, and, and it doesn't matter if you're New Jersey or not, if you sign the petition, it goes to uh, a tally that I keep for every state. So, for example, for, for New Jersey, I have 15,000 signatures for New Jersey alone that I've presented to Trenton. So they have those signatures of the people in New Jersey who are in favor of this bill. And I have the same thing going forward for every state. And then if there's somebody in another state who wants to see these bills passed in their state or introduced, I should say, in their state, there is a form on the website where they can fill out and I can tell them how to go ahead and get this bill introduced in their state. And you know what, Rosemary, with as many people that see this show on Facebook around the country and as many people that listen to the Pet Talk Today podcast throughout the country, um, I'm sure there are lawyers that listen that have dogs. I'm sure there are paralegals that listen that have dog. I'm sure there are legislators and governors uh, that have dogs. And hey, this could happen to your dog. And you know what I said? You know, the people that were, you know, talking in the comments about, hey, we don't want government to get involved. That's all we need is more, more regulation. You know, and I, I said, you know, yeah, everybody says that until it's your dog. Exactly. Until exactly. it's your dog. And, exactly. and that's unfortunate. And like, it is unfortunate because I hear so many stories without getting into the detail. Like I said earlier, a simple search on Google, dog grooming incidences. It's outrageous outrageous. There was another woman who contacted me, actually a couple of people from California, but one woman whose dog, uh, same thing kind of happened to her dog, but her dog survived and had to go through $7,000 worth of uh, physical physical therapy to get the dog to walk again. Wow. So, you know, it, it's a widespread problem, guys, and it's becoming more and more widespread as more and more dog grooming salons opening up everywhere. As they open up, uh, in every state, again, no oversight, any state, anywhere. And the pet world is one of the fastest growing uh, retail yeah. Yeah. Uh, industries that there is yeah. out there. It's recession proof, yeah. uh, COVID proof. People still got to fe- feed their dogs, groom their dogs, train their dogs, um, do all that. Wow. Um, will you do us a favor, yeah. Rosemary? Will you keep in touch with yeah. us as uh, things uh, move along, whether it be in New Jersey or another state? Absolutely, I will. We want to know what's happening with Bijou's Law. We want to know what's happening with you know, your mission, um, which I wholeheartedly support. And again, if any of you out there... Um, have any resources where you think you might be able to help Rosemary, uh, please get in touch with her. Again, her email is bijouslaw at gmail.com. That's B-I-J-O-U-S law at gmail.com. I appreciate you so much, Rosemary, coming Mm -hmm. on the Mm -hmm. show um, and sharing... uh, you know, your heartbreaking story about Bijou. Um, and, and I think, yeah. you know, that's what we need to remind everybody um, that, uh, you know, probably the lo- one of the loves of your life because Bijou was a service dog too. Yeah. He, yeah. He, my mother was, uh, had Alzheimer's and was nonverbal, which is the reason why we got the dog because I would be able to, to kind of, gauge how she was feeling based on how she was with the dog. So if she was in a good mood, she'd be, she'd be playing with the dog, she'd be petting the dog. If she wasn't feeling well, I'd be able to tell that she just wasn't giving the dog any attention. So it kind of served, he was not only just a, a pet, which is fine enough to be a pet, but he also served as a way that I could kind of gauge my mother's uh, feelings on a particular day. And he was, he was a friend of the nursing home. He was in the nursing home, uh, three or four times a week. So all of the, the uh, caregivers knew him, the employees knew him, the other residents knew him. We were a regular. So, you know, we had a, we had a fulfilling life, so to speak, even though our, situa- our situation was compromised with my mother's health. But, you know, we, we went on. So this, to be met with this kind of devastation, it was, it, was, it was horrible, to say the least. 
What a what a sad, uh, terrible tragedy, and um, I know that had to been one of the worst days um, of your life. And yeah, would be right. I right. Um, I can't. I admire you, Rosemary, because rather than um, just sit with you know all the emotions that are going to overcome somebody that yeah. experiences something like that. You went ahead and, and you put that energy into something positive, something productive uh, to be able to help others. So we definitely applaud you on that. You are a pet talk today, hero, Rosemary, and we're glad that you're around. Thank you. We're glad that you're on. You're, Thank you so much for having me, Will. Absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll talk after the show and, um, you're welcome back anytime. Please keep in touch with me so that uh, we know what uh, what the progress is with Bijou's Law. Okay? I certainly will. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Appreciate you. Well, everybody, I'm Will Bangura, and you are listening to Pet Talk today here on Facebook Live. We're here each and every Saturday morning from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 9 o'clock a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m. Mountain Standard Time and also Pacific Time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and open the phones. Um, I don't have the ability to be able to take questions in the comments section. That's something that Jordan uh, typically does um, with everything that I've got to run here. Um, I'm unable to bounce back and forth between that. But I do want to take your calls. Maybe you have a comment about today's show. Maybe you've got a comment about a grooming incident that happened to one of your pets. Maybe you've got a... Um, maybe you've got a question about your dog's training and behavior. All right, if you've got a question about your dog's training your dog's behavior, or if you've got a comment about today's show, you can give me a call. Jot down this number. Today's call-in number is 414-400-3647. Again, that's 414-400-3647 um, or 414-400-DOGS. If you've got a question, if you've got a comment, um, if you've got a problem and would like some help with your dog's training and behavior, uh, go ahead and give me a call. Um, I mentioned earlier, as we were talking with Rosemary, that not only it's not just the grooming industry that there's no requirement, no certification requirement, no licensure, uh, no specific educational requirement, as, as Rosemary said, there are signs up in grooming facilities that are literally saying no experience, no problem. Um, we've got the same problem in the dog training industry. And a lot of people, um, it blows their mind. The dog training industry, just like the dog grooming industry, there is no requirement for any education. You don't need to know anything about dog training. You don't need to know anything about dog behavior to be a dog trainer. There's no certification requirement. There's no licensure. Um, like I said, there's no educational requirement. So literally anybody can be a dog trainer. And there also, just like in the grooming industry, there's a push by Professional dog trainers, um, those that are certified, like myself, um, to shore up the industry. Because quite frankly, there's a lot of, well, most trainers out there are not certified. You know, we're lucky if 1% of trainers are certified that are out there. And I'm going to tell you, if you're looking for a dog trainer, look for somebody who's certified. Because there's so much garbage out there. Um, so much misinformation and the way that people are training dogs that um, it's barbaric. You know, people still, there are trainers out there that believe in dominance theory and they think that, you know, they got to show the dog who's boss, who's alpha, give them alpha roles and be a tough guy with them. That is garbage, folks. That's been disproven. 
There was a guy by the name of Dr. Mech in the 70s who was studying wolves in captivity. He was the one that did the, the paper, the research, the studies that, you know, was talking about dominance theory, talking about pack structure, talking about hierarchy. Well, guess what? A decade later, Dr. Mech comes out and says, hey, my research, my paper that I wrote is wrong. I was wrong. Domesticated dogs are not the same as wolves. And wolves in captivity are not the same as wolves that are not in captivity. Domesticated dogs for years and years and years, tens of thousands of years, have not been running around in packs. They have not had to hunt for their food together as a pack. They have not had to fight off predators as a pack. They never had to work together. They don't have to travel as a pack to find shelter, to find food, to find water, to fight off predators, like I said. So domesticated dogs, what's their life like? They come into your home. You provide the shelter. You provide the food. You provide the water, the comfort, the attention, love, praise, affection. You provide everything. Tell me, what does your domesticated dog get if you don't provide it? What do they get? Nothing. Air. They get the air. And some of you are worried about, is my dog alpha? Well, if that even mattered, and like I said, it's garbage, it's BS with a domesticated dog. Even if it did matter, you're not alpha, you're God. Literally, you're God. Your dog doesn't live, your dog doesn't survive without you. How can you not be in charge? Now, I know what you're thinking, because you got a dog that maybe jumps, you got a dog that is trying to get out the door in front of you, you got a dog that every time you're doing something, it's in your face, pushing you away from the wife, from the husband, from the kids. That is not a dominant dog. That is not a dog that is alpha. That's an unruly dog. That's a dog being a dog. And when I say unruly, it's a dog that hasn't been taught what the rules are. All right, what do we got here? No, nope, that's going through on the business line. So that's not, uh, that's not a call for pet talk today. Again, if you've got a question, if you'd like to talk to me, I don't care what your question is, as long as it's related to pets, you can give me a call. That number is 414-400-3647. Again, it's 414-400-3647. Also, if you are just joining us right now, I'm Will Bangura. You're listening to Pet Talk Today. Do us a favor, hit that like button, hit that heart button, show us some love. The more people that hit the like button, the more people that comment, the more people that share this, um, it's just going to get out to more people so that we can help more people. Um, getting back to dog trainers and the lack of certification, um, you know, I was just talking about the old school barbaric methods of thinking that uh, you need to dominate a dog. Listen, the canine species is not trying to dominate the human race. First of all, they know we're not dogs. Okay, we are not the same species. I already told you, you're way beyond alpha, you're God. But your dog might be very unruly. Just a dog being a dog where you have not set any rules, structure, those are things that dogs need. That doesn't mean that they're dominant and they're trying to be alpha. Even dogs that are aggressive. Hey folks, aggression, that's a secondary issue. The primary issue is fear, anxiety. No animal goes into fight or flight unless they view something as a threat. In order to view something as a threat, you have to, in order to view something as a threat, you have to be in some state of anxiety or fear. Sorry about that if you're hearing my phone ring. Um, getting a, The same phone that I'm using, um, I've got two lines on. One line is for Pet Talk Today this morning. The other line is the Phoenix dog training business. By the way, if you do need to hire a professional dog trainer, 
you can give us a call at Phoenix Dog Training. You can go to our website at phoenixdogtraining.com. Um, I also do uh, behavioral consults all over the world, all over the country. I do those virtually. Um, you can go to my other website. That's dogbehaviorist.com, dogbehaviorist.com. But if you're in Arizona, check out our website here at phoenixdogtraining.com. Now, getting back to the whole dog training world, um, you know, anybody can punish a dog. It, it doesn't take a lot of skill to use pain, fear, and intimidation to try to stop a behavior that you don't like. But is that fair to the dog? Did you take the time to teach the dog what you wanted it to do, an alternative behavior using positive reinforcement? Or is the dog just being a dog and doesn't know any better and your trainer is telling you to punish the dog? Now, they, won't use, they might not necessarily use the word punishment. They'll use the word correction. Correction is just a milder, politically correct word for punishment. Punishment means fear, pain, intimidation. Anybody can do that. Do you really need to hire a dog trainer to give a harsh correction to your dog? I mean, I don't understand it. I'll tell you, if I were hiring a dog trainer and they started giving harsh corrections to my dog and they're trying to teach a new behavior by doing that, I'm going to get the heck out of there. I'm getting my dog out of there. No way in heck. And this, there's so many things. Do you know a lot of people, hey, I know it sounds nice to set the idea of sending your dog away for training, doing a board and train. We all want to do that, right? Because we don't want to do the work. We're lazy. Those of you that aren't lazy, I'm not talking about you, but there's a lot of lazy people out there. They'd love to just go send the dog away to a board and train. And they're thinking the dog's going to come back perfect. Well, guess what? Trainers love board and train too. You know why? Because they get bulk volume. They charge an arm and a leg for that because they're telling you it's a premium service. Um, they barely work with the dogs at all. And the way they get it done quickly is they put a lot of pressure. They use a lot of uh, coercion, a lot of pressure, a lot of harsh training methods to get it done quickly. You know, these board and trains are saying, hey, send your dog to us for a week. Send your dog to us for two weeks to three weeks. And they're even advertising that for dogs with fears, phobias, aggression. There is no way in hell, no way in hell, you are going to be correcting and rehabilitating a dog with a real aggression, real fears, real phobias in two to three weeks. No way in hell. That should be your first red flag. other than the fact that they are probably not certified. Now, there are a couple of organizations that do certify dog trainers. There's the big one, the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers. They're at CCPDT. That's Charlie, Charlie, Paul, Delta, Tango, ccpdt.org. That's the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers. And they certify dog trainers and canine behavior consultants. Now, they're the only certification body that is certified. I know that might sound strange, but um, the same oversight organizations that overlook certification agencies, like, for example, um, Doctors, other professions, they've got certifying bodies, but who, where's the oversight for the certifying body? Is that certifying body independent or is it the people who want to be certified coming together and creating their own certification? That wouldn't be objective, would it? Well, the only objective certification for dog trainers is the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers. Jordan and myself are members. There's other organizations like the IAABC, the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, but they're not 
regulated. There's no oversight to them. So it's a bunch of dog trainers that got together, created their own association and said, hey, let's go ahead and issue our own certification and it'll just be within us, our little fraternity. I don't, I don't think that's valuable. There's no oversight to that. Uh, there's the Association of Animal Behavior Professionals. Same thing, no oversight. There's the Certified Behavior Adjustment Training Instructor. I don't think that should be a, a certification. That's a subset of dog training. That's a specific method. Um, there's the International Association of Canine Professionals. Um, groomers belong to that. Pet sitters belong to that. Dog trainers, uh, people that work at doggy daycare, um, dog boarding facilities. So they're a hodgepodge of, of people. Um, they let anybody in there. They don't care if uh, they don't care what you're doing with dogs. You could be um, hanging a dog, helicoptering a dog, doing really old school, harsh methods. They don't care. Um, unlike the other, at least the other certifying bodies, they have ethics and guidelines that say, hey, you can't be abusing dogs. I know it, you'd think it would be a given. But, you know, I was talking about board and train. Do you know in 2006 here in Phoenix? 2006, one company, 28 dogs died in their care. 28 dogs died in their care in 2006 here in Phoenix, Arizona, a big board and train facility. 28 dogs died. And it was found that they were not negligent, which I think is BS. Baloney. But getting back to dog, uh, dog trainer, dog training certification. Um, the problem is with the dog training world too, I worry about this because everybody and their brother is issuing a certification. It's like any dog trainer that, that goes to one little course, you know, maybe they go to course on, you know, a two hour workshop on, on how to, uh, relax a dog by giving the dog cane and massage. And they walk out of there and somebody gives them a certificate. And now all of a sudden they're saying, I'm a certified canine massage therapist. They are blowing up, puffing up their credentials when they really don't have it. Let me give you an example. Okay. This is a magazine and it's a magazine of the association of pet dog trainers. Every Dog trainer that's a member of the Association of Pet Dog Trainers gets this. And they're advertising the speakers that they're going to have at the Association of Pet Dog Training Convention this year. I'm not going to say the name of the individual, but there's a person who is going to be doing a workshop for dog trainers. And after this person's name... They have their credentials. Let me read their credentials to you. Person's name, comma, CPDT-KSA, comma, CBCC-KA, comma, CDBC, comma, CSAT, comma, CPACTP, comma, VSPDT, comma, CBATI, comma, FFCP trainer, comma, VSDTA faculty, comma, DWA faculty. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You don't believe me? Take a look. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can blow that. Nah. I, can't, I can't zoom in on it. Um, but literally, this person has one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different credentials after their name. And I'm telling you right now, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. If you know who you are, if you listen to my show, you're being ridiculous. Is your self esteem that poor that you need to every workshop you go to, you're going to say that somehow you got a new certification? How do we know which certification is important for a dog trainer? If every class you take, every two-hour workshop you take, you're going to say, oh, I got a new certification. You know, real professions don't do that. 
you know, a doctor after their name, MD. And maybe they've got a specialty as a family practitioner, and they got a couple other letters after MD. But they don't have a paragraph of letters. They don't have every single letter in the alphabet after their name. So my concern is, while real professional dog trainers are pushing for certification, which damn certification? We're never going to get certification in this industry if we've got supposedly 10, 12, 50 different types of certifications. That is insane. Folks, we are out of time. Um, I'm sorry that I couldn't take any questions if you posted them in the comments section. Um, Hopefully, Jordan will be back next week. He had a personal emergency that he needed to deal with today. Um, Jordan is the one that uh, really helps out a lot to make sure that uh, we are able to read your questions in the comments and ask ask your questions. Um, Do me a favor. Please, please, please hit that like button. Share this video on your Facebook page. Uh, Share it with your friends and families. Also, if you are not subscribed to the Pet Talk Today podcast, you need to do that because I have special podcasts that have different topics than just this show that you see on Facebook. Now, pretty much most of the Facebook shows are uploaded to the podcast. But again, we've got other podcasts that we've never done on the show. For example, Season one, episode 16, our most popular podcast. It's 45 minutes on how to potty train any dog. Season one, episode 16. So you can go to Apple Podcasts. You can go to Spotify. You can go to Google Podcasts. Look up Pet Talk today. Make sure you subscribe and do us a favor. If you like what we're doing, please give our podcast on Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Spotify, give us a review. Let us know what you think of our show. If you've got comments, if you have an idea for a topic that you would like us to cover on Pet Talk Today, because this is your show, do me a favor. You can also send me an email. My email address is info at pettalktoday.com. That's info at pettalktoday.com. Well, we are out of time. It's been a great show. I really appreciate uh, Rosemary for being here and talking about Bijou's Law. Uh, Be sure to check out her website at bijouslaw.com. That's B-I-J-O-U-S-L-A-W dot com. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'm out of here.